I can barely remember what life was like before we found the game that June night. We were six high school kids bored out of our minds, trying our best to fill the void. Most of us had part-time summer jobs, but we were hesitant to spend money on anything. We all hoped to save for college. After what felt like hours going back and forth on deciding what to do for the day, we took a walk around our suburban neighborhood. It was the end of a yard sale day and most people were packing up and heading inside. A few people still remained outside eager to sell. We didn't really have the intention to buy anything, but I still combed through the last pieces of used crap people set out. I always think I'm going to find some kind of amazing treasure, but always end up questioning my purchases hours later. I found myself digging through a shoebox full of old board games. I thought I might be able to find a new game for all of us to play. I also figured, since it was the end of the day, I might get it for super cheap. At first, I only saw games that looked in too bad of shape to even buy. That, or it was a game I knew my friends wouldn't want to play. I've always been a board game fan, but not so much my friends. I had to beg them for months to play D&D with me, and they were only willing to play it for my birthday. I'm always trying to find new games that might interest them. I was ready to give up, but then I saw a game at the bottom that I'd never heard of. Tasks with friends with the tagline. The game you and your friends will never want to put down. The box looked colorful and pretty worn out, but not so bad that we couldn't play with it. It just looked well loved. I tried to open it up, but the sides were taped down. I mean, it makes sense. You don't want all the pieces to come flying out after all. I didn't see a price tag or sign for the price, so I found the owner and asked her, Excuse me, how much are you charging for the game? I said eagerly to the woman while admiring the bright colored box that lacked any company branding or trademarking. Oh, that old thing, I don't know. Do you have a dollar on you? The woman said as she put the yard sale leftovers into one big box. As she told me the price, I perked up and started to dig through my purse. She either got annoyed with me taking too long or just wanted to be nice and told me to just take it. She immediately started to back up her box again. So, uh, is the game any fun? I said to her awkwardly. I actually never played it. My friend Jen gave it to me a few years back because her kids got obsessed over it or something, so she just wanted to get rid of it. She thought my family would enjoy it, but we just never got around to playing it. She said with her back facing me. I kindly thanked her and called for my friends to come over to see what I got. As I called for them, I could see their curiosity over what I found. That excitement was quickly lost when they saw I had a board game in my hands. They rolled their eyes, knowing that I would try and get them to play it with me. Kate, you know we don't do the board game thing, Aaron said to me annoyed. Come on, guys. You've all been going on and on all day about how bored you are. At least try. This game looks really fun. I actually haven't played this one before so we can all learn together. I said as I saw their faces start to grow curious again. James came up to me and gestured at the box in my hand. I gave it over to him, hoping that he would be convinced to play after looking at it. I knew if he was down to play, everyone else would be too. As he held the box, I could see the expression on his face change from doubt to excitement. Damn, this game looks like fun. Let's go play. He said with a giddy tone I'd never heard him use. He started to jog in the direction of his house with me close behind, and the rest of our friends slowly walking behind me, looking confused as to why James was so excited to play a board game when he was normally the person most against them. We all made it back to James's house. We walked in and were greeted by his mom, confused as to what made her emotionless son so excited. As we stood in the entryway, not sure what to say, we heard him calling us from the basement. We ran down the steps to see the game fully set up on the floor and ready to play. He was sitting on a pillow, reading the instructions with intense concentration. James, are we actually playing this game? Bree whined. Yes, we are. I promise if you just sit down and start to play, you will have fun. I had a chance to learn the rules while you guys got here, James insisted as he shuffled a pile of cards one last time. After a few minutes of back and forth, everyone was sitting down and ready to play. James explained the rules of the game directly from the intrusion manual. 
Each player starts with their token at the start of the board. Players will take turns drawing a card from the top of the deck. Each card will have a task. If that task is completed, you may move the number of spaces that are specified on the card. Once you see the card, it will say secret or public at the top. If it's a secret card, do not read it out loud. This task must be completed without anyone noticing or questioning the action on the card. For example, hold someone's hand, sing a song, insult someone, etc. Just complete the task without anyone calling you out. If a player does something you believe to be a secret task, say out loud deceiver. If the player was caught, they will show their card and fail their task. Do not move any pieces. If the person who calls out deceiver wrongly accuses the player, then they must move back one space. The accused player will keep that card and continue to try and complete the task. Once you have successfully completed a secret task, you may announce task complete and move your token forward as many spaces as specified on your task card. If you pull a public card, you must read it out loud. These cards will include things like saying the alphabet backwards, don't say them or uh, until your next turn, singing a karaoke song, playing dead for one minute, etc. Some cards have time limits and specific instructions. Every card will clearly state the task. The player who gets their token to the end of the board wins. The game will start with the player who lied last drawing a card. Take turns drawing one card at a time with the person to your right going next. Have fun! James folded the paper instructions up and sat them by his side, asking if anyone had questions. No one said anything. It seemed like they all understood the game fine, or maybe they just didn't care yet. <laughs> all right, let's get the game started, James proclaimed, but was met with blank stares. Come on, guys, I just read the rules. You should know how the game starts. We have to start with who lied last. Everyone remained silent. No one wanted to say their last lie. This is so dumb. I guess I'll go. I told my mom that Henry wasn't hanging out with us when I left the house. There, I'll go first. Bree blurted out as she leaned forward to grab a card. As she looked at it, she rolled her eyes. This is so dumb. Why are we playing this game? Come on, Bree. It can't be that bad. Can you read it out loud? Henry said, sensing that the card was embarrassing. Ugh, public card. Pretend to be a cow for three minutes. She threw the card down and looked at Henry, who was to her right, expecting her turn to just be over and not wanting to even try. The rest of the group started to laugh and encourage her, chanting her name and begging her to do it. After about a minute, she gave in and got down on her hands and knees. When she first started, she was annoyed, staring daggers at Henry. As her time ran down, I could see in her face her feelings towards the game change. When the timer went off, uh, she didn't stop for a few seconds. She kept going because she was laughing so hard. That was so fun. Someone moved my token up one space. Henry, it's your turn now. Bree said with a giggle and a newfound excitement. Henry looked at her in disbelief. He was so used to her cold exterior, but liked that this game made it melt away. Henry picked up his card. He motioned, zipping his lips shut and shook his head. Me, Bree, and James all squealed in excitement with the rest of the group looking lost, not understanding what they missed that got us so excited. Since Henry had a secret card, it was AJ's turn. She was chuckling along, but clearly just doing it because she didn't want to look dumb for asking us what was so funny. She pulled her card and read it out loud. Um, it's a public card? She said with a dry tone, trying to gauge the room and observe everyone else as they celebrated her public card. It says I have to do jumping jacks until my next turn. As she stood up, everyone in the room cheered her on except for Aaron. As she got to her feet, she paused and looked over at Aaron. I can imagine he felt like the only sane person in the room and wasn't sure what was going on. After a second of hesitation, she started her jumping jacks. Aaron looked around at us, eyeing him down desperately waiting for him to read his card. By the time he finally picked up his card, AJ had started to laugh while doing her jumping jacks. Sorry, it's a secret card, Aaron said nervously as everyone wiggled with happiness. Well, looks like it's my turn. 
I said as I leaned forward but was cut off by Henry quickly standing to his feet and lunging towards AJ, tackling her to the ground interrupting her jumping jacks and making a loud thump as they hit the ground. Henry, what the hell are you doing? What's wrong with you? Aaron yelled in a serious tone that turned into him trying not to laugh by the end of the sentence. I'm calling a deceiver on that tackle Henry. Bree stated with a laugh. Okay, okay, you got me. Henry said while still laying on AJ from his tackle. They both smiled over the event even though it clearly hurt when they hit the floor. But you have to admit that one was tricky. I tried to start my turn again but was interrupted by Aaron. Ha, huh, task completed. I yelled at Henry and didn't get caught. I get to move two spaces. He said as he smugly moved his token two spaces on the game board. We kept playing the game for hours. We finished the first game and everyone wanted to play again and again and again. I looked around at them in disbelief. It felt impossible that all my friends were enjoying a board game. It was a dream come true after years of begging. Finally. Normally at hangouts like this by 10 p.m., Bree and Henry would wander off to make out in some closet. AJ goes home to sleep and Aaron, James, and I are left to awkwardly try and find something to do with just the three of us. It got to be 2 a.m. and we were either exhausted or our parents calling us telling us to come home, or we would be in serious trouble. We all went back to our houses, but all had a hard time going to sleep. We stayed up until 5 a.m. for some of us, just talking about the game over text. Strategies when we could play again, funny things that happened that night, we couldn't get enough. The games we played started out pretty simple, no tasks got too wild, and while we really loved to play, it wasn't like it was taking over our whole lives. Not yet at least, because we played the game at James's house the first time, we ended up just keeping it there. Even though the game was technically mine, we always hung out at his place, so it just made sense. It was around 10 a.m. the next day when our group chat started to blow up with everyone asking when we could get together that day. Now, because it was summertime and we were all teenagers, we either had work in the mornings or most of us slept until noon. But not me. I was always up early waiting for my friends to get up so I had something to do, or trying to make some money as a dog walker. That being said, I was shocked when I saw that everyone was up and everyone claimed to not have work. James didn't have a job at that point, so of course he was free, but everyone else was too. That did not happen often. We all met up at James's place at around 11 a.m. that same day, everyone eager to play. We must have played 10 games that day. The games consisted of us doing accents, being banned from saying certain words, backflips, and so on. Nothing too weird. We realized after a few games that we never got a repeating card. Not one time. This was strange because there were probably 200 cards in the deck, but even with us playing a dozen games, every card was new. I knew I had a couple of dogs to walk that evening, but texted the owners to cancel. No way was I going to leave while all my friends were enjoying a board game this much. I knew AJ said something about her having a shift at 4 p.m., but when the time got close, she went to the other side of the room and called out of work. She didn't even mention it to us or talk about it. She just stood up, walked to the corner, talked to her manager, and came back. No one thought anything of it. After a few minutes, she loudly proclaimed, task completed, moving her token up three spaces. We looked around confused at what task she had, and the card said, call out sick to work. We were surprised by this card, to say the least. It was the first time a card had to do with something outside of the players. Everyone else in the group canceled any plans they had for the rest of the day. Although AJ was the only person who completed a task for it. It was around 11 p.m. which made it a full 12 hours of the game. Bree pointed out that we forgot to eat any food all day. After thinking about it, I realized that I hardly drank any water and went to the bathroom like one time all day. Things started to get out of hand that night. AJ pulled a card that said to go into a closet with the player to her left and kiss them for five minutes. Of course, that player was Henry. Bree was not happy, but she knew how serious everyone was about the game. She told him she wasn't okay with it, but he insisted that it was just a game and it wouldn't mean anything. It was worth four points for both people who would go into the closet. 
AJ and Henry stood up and went to find a suitable space, all while Bree freaked out and said she would end things with Henry if he went through with it. It was never completely clear what Henry and Bree were. They don't like to use boyfriend and girlfriend, but everyone knew they were a thing. Aaron tried to call it off, saying this wouldn't be worth it and to just stop, but it was like they didn't even hesitate. Bree sat on the carpet and started to cry as the timer on her phone counted down an agonizing five minutes. I thought I would either hear kissing or nothing at all, but instead I heard talking. It started as soft whispers, then crying and yelling. They stayed in for about two minutes, then came tumbling out. That's it, Henry. I can't believe you would do that for a game. We are over, Bree said with a red, wet face. Henry came and silently sat down with AJ. AJ was now beet red as well. Despite three of my friends just going through something I couldn't wrap my head around, they all looked at James calmly and nodded for him to pull his card. No one had moved any tokens forward, so it was clear they failed their task of kissing in the closet. James hesitantly leaned in for a card and read it to himself as we were bombarded by Bree, AJ, and Henry all saying, Task completed, and then shot confused faces at each other. They all threw down their cards and moved their tokens forward. Bree's card said, Break up with Henry. Henry's card said, Make AJ cry. And AJ's card said, Tell Henry you love him. All those cards were worth way more than the stupid kissing card, so the kissing task was ignored, and they all individually completed their art task without ever communicating it with each other. They all saw opportunities to complete a task worth more points, and they took it. After this moment, it was like nothing even happened. The girls stopped crying and started laughing and saying how impressive the completion of the tasks were. Wait guys, something is wrong here. Do you not see it? Aaron said with concern, trying to take a break from the game. Oh stop, you are just jealous you didn't get to move six spaces, Bree said with arrogance. No, I'm not talking about that. Does no one find it weird that the cards are using our names now? Not only that, but the cards are somehow interacting with other cards to almost try and make bad things happen? James blurted. As he said that, it was like we all froze in our spots, all looking at each other, realizing how hungry and tired we were, looking around at the room, seeing how big of a mess we made, Bree grabbing Henry's hand with a look of sadness and coming to grips with how they hurt each other for a game. I looked down at my arm and was reminded of the crud things I had drawn on my arm with Sharpies in order to move one space in an earlier game. I saw Aaron's jeans that were now cut into shorts with some kid scissors. I looked at James's legs and saw his one shaved leg lying crossed over the untouched hairy one. I looked at AJ and saw she had a huge purple bruise on her arm. At that moment, I remembered feeling like an addict trying to get off drugs. I knew this game was hurting us. I wanted to stop, but felt like I couldn't. I could see the same feeling in all my friends' eyes too. The urge to say one more game just one more time. Just to feel the high of this dumb game again. I... I think we need to take a break from this game, guys. It's getting kind of weird and out of hand. I murmured with the strength that I somehow mustered up. It was like telling an alcoholic you were taking away their beer. They all looked horrified at the idea of not playing the game for even a moment. Just then, James's mom came downstairs and was horrified at what she was looking at. Six disheveled teenagers all sitting in a circle looking like they had all just been through a war. Not only that, but her whole basement was a mess. James, what the hell happened to your leg? Are you all playing that dumb game again? I can't believe this. Everyone out of my house. James, you are grounded. His mom shouted with rage in her voice. We all ran out of his house, not saying a word to each other, just trying to get home and get some food. As I sat in my kitchen with my long-sleeved sweatshirt covering my now inked-up arm, I tried to eat a sandwich I made myself. I was starving. I could feel and hear my stomach growling, but my need to play the game was so much stronger. So strong I didn't even want to eat. I sat at my dining room table staring at that sandwich for what felt like an eternity. Telling myself that I needed to eat, and I'd feel better if I did, but somehow the thought of the game was taking up all my energy. I was holding back the urge to text my friends. It took every ounce of self-control I had left. 
I felt my phone buzz in my pocket, and I involuntarily grabbed my phone so fast it was in my hand before I could even think about it. It was James in our group chat. Hey guys, so do you think that was a long enough break? I think I can find where my mom put the game and bring it to that old tree house back behind Mr. Baker's house. I couldn't hold back anymore, I had to play again. Before I knew it, I was sneaking out of my house trying to remember where the old treehouse was. As I ran through the neighborhood, my phone lit up with texts from my friends saying they were on their way. After running around for a while, I found the treehouse. I couldn't believe I had such a hard time finding it considering how much time a few of us used to spend in it during middle school. I could hear all their voices sounding annoyed as I was the last one to get there. I climbed up the old wooden ladder to find all my friends sitting in a perfect circle, barely able to see the board or each other. It was around this time something strange happened within the game. It wasn't about winning the game, necessarily. It was about playing as many games as possible and completing as many tasks as we could. If anyone won a game or finished a task, everyone felt a high, not just the winner. Because of this, players stopped calling each other out for trying to complete secret tasks, so people stopped being so secretive to complete secret tasks. They still kept them a secret because it was a rule of the game, just no one called them out. This made us all more ruthless. I sat down on the hardwood in between Bree and James. Our next game began. AJ drew a card first and it was a secret card. She didn't seem giddy. She looked flush and scared. In fact, it felt like the mood had shifted with everyone. We weren't laughing our butts off anymore. We were terrified to stop playing. It was something in our guts that made us have to play, like a virus growing in us, desperately trying to get out. Next, Aaron drew a card and read it out loud. Hold your breath for five minutes, he whispered with confusion. How am I supposed to do that? He said, trying to not get worried. It's not that the card was all that bad. It's that he knew he would stop at nothing to make it happen. He told us to keep playing the game while he did it and got a timer up on his phone. He took a few deep breaths, then held his nose shut and became extremely focused, not making eye contact with anyone. Next, it was James's turn. He had a secret card and didn't show much emotion towards it. Next, Bree nervously took a card and, yet again, it was a secret card. In fact, we all drew a secret card until it was Aaron's turn again. It had been about 45 seconds and he was really focusing, and we didn't want to make him draw a card while trying to finish his task. As we sat and watched our friend become more and more red from holding his breath, we found ourselves in complete silence. Other than the wind weaving its way through the trees outside and the soft sound of crickets in the distance, we all just stared at each other. Terrified of what was on those secret cards, I knew I had to use every little bit of self-control I had left in my body to not try and complete the task on my card. I was betting that's why everyone was being so quiet. They all had tasks that they didn't want to do, but felt the uncontrollable urge to do it. My card said that I needed to remove one of James's fingers by any means necessary. It was worth 10 points. I couldn't believe I wanted to complete it so badly, but I was frozen figuring out how to do it. As I stared at him, I noticed he was looking over at Bree. I figured that his card had something to do with her. It seemed like everyone was fixated on someone else. I glanced down at the timer Aaron had, and I was amazed to see he had been holding his breath for almost two minutes. Just as I was about to comment on it, chaos broke loose, everyone jumping onto someone else, making it one big pile of people viciously grabbing each other. I didn't read their cards myself, but it was clear by their actions what their tasks were. Of course, as you know, I was going for James's fingers, but James's was ripping at Bree's ear. Bree was pulling Henry's hair out. Henry was tearing at AJ's neck, and AJ was trying to open my mouth to get my tongue. For a solid 30 seconds, we were all attaching each other when Aaron passed out from holding his breath. This seemed to snap us out of our trance for a bit. We ran over to our friend and checked his pulse. After we realized he was still breathing, we got lost in the game again and all jumped on each other to keep brutalizing one another. Just as I got my teeth around James's pinky finger, we saw a bright flashlight coming through the cracks in the treehouse and froze. 
A police officer popped his head through the bottom entrance to the treehouse and looked at us in horror. He saw Aaron out cold in the corner, alone with the rest of us in a pile of blood and ripped out hair. The officer grabbed us one by one and practically threw us to the ground where another officer put us each in handcuffs. We had hours and hours of questioning that night, but we were all released by sunrise. No one was badly injured, just a lot of cuts, bruises, and a few patches of hair missing. Even Aaron was okay. Honestly, Aaron made it out in the best shape. We all got grounded for the rest of the summer. All the parents agreed that we needed to stop spending time together because they insisted on us having some beef between us all. None of us mentioned the board game was at the treehouse that night because we didn't want them to take it away from us. We knew we had to play it again. However, they caught onto it and banned us from ever playing it again. We spent the next three weeks of summer miserable. Each one of us tried to fill the hunger to play the game by playing other board games or attempting to remake it, but it wasn't the same. It was the night before school started and I got a message from James through Skype. Our parents banned us from talking to each other, but it seemed my parents and James's parents forgot about Skype. He told me I had to come over right now. I managed to hop out my window and ran for James's house. I got to his house in what felt like record time and jumped down the fire escape to the basement. There I saw the rest of my friends all sitting by the fireplace, weeping. As I got closer, I saw they were covered in ash. I saw tiny little bits of what was left of the game lying out on the ground. She burned it. My mom burned it. James said, in between tears, everyone was desperately trying to find any pieces that were left of our precious game. Some of them rubbed the ashes of the game on their faces and arms to try and feel something again. As I watched them, I saw something in the corner of my eye. I looked over to our normal hangout area and saw it. I saw the board game sitting out. Not just the box, but the whole game was out and ready to play. Um, are you sure that your mom burnt it, James? I said as my eyes got glazed over looking at the beautiful board game sitting out for us to enjoy. Yes, I'm sure. She did it right in front of me so I'd stop looking for it. Just as James finished his sentence, he looked at me and then at my eyeline. He saw the game. The next week of our lives was a whirlwind. After James's mom burned the game and it reappeared, we all ran away with the game. We stole a car from AJ's mom after we got a task card for it and left town. We would play the game in the car in random fast food restaurants and sometimes in parks. It's all we did all day. We would fall asleep playing the game and only managed to eat maybe a bag of chips or something small during the day. We kept moving because we didn't want to be found. In that week, we all managed to lose our jobs and all missed the first week of our senior year of high school, all because we were addicted to a board game. I still remember the last game we ever played. It was a late Sunday night. We were actually in our town, sitting in an old barn near the treehouse we sat in before all because the board game told us to. Up to that point, we were hanging out far away from home. We didn't want to be so close. We knew we could be found easily by our families and the authorities if we were too close, but we had no choice. We were slaves to the game. At this point, we were in bad shape. With every new game started, we broke down a little bit more. We surrounded the board with tired eyes and growling stomachs, missing teeth and bruised bodies concussed heads and broken toes. Please, we have to stop. I can't do it anymore. I want to go home. Bree said as we were about to start our next game. I can't imagine not playing this game. It's all I ever want to do. I think I might die if I couldn't play it. I know the game hurts us, but it would hurt so much more if we stopped playing it. Henry said with a gravelly voice. Guys, why are we talking? We have to play again. Aaron said while trying not to cough. I know we have to. I've never hated something and loved something so much in my whole life, Bree remarked. We started the game with shaky hands, moving slowly and holding our breath whenever someone looked at their card. AJ went first. She reached down and picked a card, cringing to herself after reading it in her head. Next was Bree. She rolled her eyes and she read off the words. Public card. Waterboard the player to your right for five minutes. Both players move eight spaces. 
Bree timidly said as she glanced at James sitting next to her. I can't say we really knew how to waterboard someone, but we laid him on his back with his legs elevated and drip water over him. We let him take a card for his turn before Bree started the waterboarding so we didn't have to wait for five minutes for them to be done. His card was a secret card. We continued the game with the awful background sounds of gagging and choking. Next, it was Aaron's turn. He read his card and winced. He closed his eyes tight and opened them again, as if he was hoping he was in a dream. As he opened his eyes, he slowly looked at all of us, making eye contact with each one of us. Just then, James was done being waterboarded and he and Bree came to join us. I was so glad they were done. Not just because I was sick of the sounds, but because it meant they got to move eight spaces. Aaron stood to his feet slowly. I prepared myself because I figured he was about to hurt us. In an instant, he ran out of the barn and into our stolen car. We all looked around confused as to where we went, but kept playing the game as he drove off. Next, it was my turn. Public car jump off the roof of the barn, nine points, I said out loud nervously. Henry and AJ jumped up and started to walk outside not even questioning if I would do it or not. They weren't wrong in the assumption. Before I could even think, I was on my feet trying to find a way up to the roof. I found my way to the top of the 10-foot tall building. I took a deep breath and leaped off and was met with a hard thump as I hit the ground. I felt a gut-wrenching pain in my right ankle as I landed. I knew I broke it. I had no doubt in my mind. I was thrashing in pain grabbing my ankle as my friends dragged me back into the barn. We knew we had to keep playing. Next, Henry took a card. He picked it from the pile with his eyes closed and brought it to his face, while peeking just enough to see the words on the card. Then closed his eyes again, trying to pretend he never read the words in the first place. Next, AJ took a card. Even though it was a secret card, I knew it was about me. She glanced down at my ankle right after her eyes left the card. Just as James was reaching for his card, we saw Aaron walk back into the barn. We all sat in shock as his silhouette became clear and vivid in the doorway. Blood trickled down his arms and hands, dripping on the dirt as we all stared at each other. His eyes were blank at first, but then turned to pain. We watched him as he walked from the doorway to the game board, blood dripping on the game as he moved his token 30 spaces. Aaron, what have you done? 30 spaces? AJ muttered in fear. James, I... I'm so sorry I had to. Aaron whimpered as sat in the dirt with his secret task card crinkled in his bloodied fist. Tell me what you did right now. What the hell does your card say? Show us! James yelled as he stood to his feet. Just as James was about to jump onto Aaron, Henry reached into his pocket and pulled out some matches we used to start small campfires while we had been on the run. We all stood still, waiting to see what he was about to do as he lit three matches and threw them into the nearby hay bales, igniting the hole inside of the barn. Without hesitation, AJ saw the opportunity and stomped on my ankle as hard as she could. If it wasn't broken before, it sure was now. I looked down at it to see it now bent sideways. She then stomped on my other ankle, not breaking it but making it so I couldn't walk. She moved her token 12 spaces. Even though I was in agony from the pain, I still felt such an intense high from her moving so many spaces. Aaron dropped his card in the midst of everything happening. James fell to his feet to see the card and started to weep as he read it out loud. Secret card, kill James's mom, move 30 spaces. He said with anger bubbling up, I can't believe you would do that for a dumb game. How... How could you do this to me? I couldn't control myself. Come on, you know what I mean. I couldn't control myself. Don't do anything you will regret. Aaron said cautiously. Oh, I think it's a little too late for not doing things we regret. James said as he jumped onto Aaron, choking him with all his strength. It seemed at that moment he was able to break free from the control of the game. He wasn't feeling the high of someone else completing a task. He just felt hate. Red hot hate. I was overwhelmed to say the least. The barn was in flames. James was trying to kill Aaron, and to make matters worse, 
AJ out of nowhere jumped up and dug a pocket knife into Bree's stomach. Now Bree and AJ were in a fighting match too. Henry and I sat across from each other in disbelief at our surroundings. He looked at me with death in his eyes as he reached for a card. It wasn't even his turn, but I don't think he cared anymore. He knew the others would be occupied for a while. The fire was getting bad. I knew I had to get out of that barn as soon as I could. Because of the damage done to my ankles, I couldn't walk, so I dragged my body out of the barn, taking the game with me. I made it a few feet and looked back to see Henry not moving. He set his card down on the board before I started to drag it with me and I read it as I continued to crawl secret card. Let the fire overtake you. Move your token to the finish line and win the game. I was able to get out of the barn with the board game in hand. I sat and watched as the flames overtook Henry. He didn't even flinch when he caught on fire. As I saw it happen, I moved his token to the end space so he could win the game. I felt an intense high overtake my body as the game was complete. Only a few moments after Henry caught fire, the whole barn came down, with all my friends in it. I looked at the burning barn and then back down at the game. I'm ashamed to say that my biggest worry was not knowing who I'd play with now. I hate myself for thinking that, but that's how all the game is. I tried to start a new game by myself and drew a card, but that's when I saw the sirens of police cars and fire trucks pull up next to me. I was immediately surrounded by people trying to give me medical attention, taking me away from my game. I scratched and threw my body around like a toddler not getting their way. I remember them giving me some kind of sedative and waking up in the hospital. I was the only person to make it out alive that night. All I could say to the doctors and my parents was that I needed the game. That I had to play the game. It was the only meaning to life. It was the only reason I had to live. My parents got me a great lawyer and I got out of everything by pleading insanity. Our families all knew the right people and had the right money to ensure the word never got out about the deaths. They even managed to make the death of James's mom disappear. When they told me my friends were all dead, I didn't have much of a reaction. I just kept asking where the game was. When they eventually told me the game was gone and never coming back, that's when I lost it. They had to put me into restraints because I kept hurting the hospital staff from my meltdowns. I started to threaten the staff and told them all the horrible things that would happen to them if they didn't get that game back to me. I eventually ended up in a psychiatric hospital. I yelled and screamed so much that I never had my voice. I hardly ever slept because all I thought about was the game and how I craved to play it again. My skin was red and torn up from my insistent picking due to the withdrawals. After months, I felt numb. Maybe from all the drugs they pumped me up with or perhaps I was so used to the withdrawals I didn't feel it as much. It still felt like I had an uncontrollable urge inside my bones, but I was able to hide it. They then sent me home after a while. I knew I had to mask my emotions for the game, pretend I didn't care anymore, even if it killed me inside to say it out loud. I walked into my bedroom and I felt like I was being treated like a baby. My old bed frame was gone and it was just the mattress on the floor. All my sharp shelves were taken down, along with anything else I could possibly hurt myself with. I rolled my eyes, but knew my parents had to make these changes for me to even come home. I sat on my bed, and I looked around at my room. Now, with a doorknob that locked from the outside to keep me in, as well as bars on my windows. I searched my room desperately to find something to take up my mind. That's when I dug through my closet, and I saw it. I saw that beautiful, colorful box that I came to know so well, just hiding in the back of my closet waiting to be found. I knew it came back the first time it was destroyed, but it was feeling like it was a one-time thing. But here it was, patiently waiting for me to come and play it. I ripped open the box, giving myself a paper cut in the process, and started to play the game by myself. With all that being said, I can finally say task completed and share what my first card said in that solo game. Secret card. Spread the word about this game online so more people can join us. Move 20 spaces. So what do you say? Care to come join me for a game? <laughs>